Alright everyone, welcome back to the channel for another Bitcoin update. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin momentum indicators. This is going to be one out of two Bitcoin videos that I am going to upload today. I'm going to keep these separate because in this video, we're going to be looking at a range of oscillators, a range of momentum indicators, and we're going to be talking about what is currently playing out in the markets. And in the video I'm uploading after this, we're going to be talking about the macro market structure. So let's jump right into what we've got going on today. Now, in the previous video that I made yesterday, we were talking about a range of indicators, most of them bearish, one of them bullish, and the bullish one did not play out. We'll talk about that in a moment. What you can see, how we had this drawn yesterday, is we had a high up here, and as of the time of recording yesterday, this was the chart setup that we were playing at. But what you can actually see is we didn't follow with the typical trend of coming up and making another lower high. But what we did is almost equally as bearish. What we've done is this was the high. We talked about this level yesterday, 21,700 on the hourly time frame. If we zoom out, you can see what we actually did moving this down to the close is we pumped above it on the one hourly candle. We got shot right back down to the downside. And just where this resistance was at 21,700, we had an hourly body close over at 21,700. And as you can see, we got clotted back down to the downside. So we are still in a very, very slight uptrend. Obviously higher time frames, we are in a massive downtrend. If we zoom out, you can see we are absolutely miles away from Bitcoin's bull market support bands. If we do zoom in, you can also see that we do have uh, some hidden bullish divergence playing out right now. And this is over on the money flow indicator. You can see the strength of the money flow indicator is moving to the downside while the price is moving up. This is typically a bullish signal. However, with everything else that is going on the chart that I will be talking about in a moment, I, I do think there's more bearish indicators over in the market than there are bullish. If we look at the Hikonashi candles and get a good gauge on what the momentum is saying, you can still see we are slightly hanging in there as we are moving up to the top side of this triangle. Angle, we are tipping over to the downside on the four hourly time frame and we do have a tiny bit of bearish volume starting to step in really nothing crazy uh, what i would say about this volume is though that we are seeing some indicators that we're bullish like we had the inverse head and shoulders over here we broke above it and it in my opinion because like i said you know I, I do like to highlight these bullish signals even if i don't think they're going to play out i like to be as unbiased as possible you know my perspective i don't think the bottom's in i think we've got another leg to the downside before the bottom's in but we did temporarily break to the upside of this inverse head and shoulders we came back you know we had many four hourly back tests of it and it seems like we're coming up and emming back down like i said bearish volume coming in i'll talk about the oscillators in a moment what you can also see which is one of the indicators i talked about yesterday is that we did have a potential bullish diamond half diamond reversal pattern and once again this was another one that i said i do not think will be playing out to the upside and what do we do we ran right to the upside of the resistance we came right back down to retest its support and bang we got shot right beneath it and we have temporarily at least broken to the downside of this uptrend now if you are a veteran to my channel you really do know that i'm not the biggest fan of uh, support lines trend lines in the first place i much prefer horizontal levels of resistance i prefer to look at fibonacci's oscillators moving averages uh, all of that good stuff so is it the end of the world that we have broken uh, belief beneath this trend line not really but i still do think with everything else we're going to talk about this is going to push us down so with this chart we'll wrap it up the mfi is heading down we've made a lower high since the 21st of june so it's it's not necessarily looking good it's it's really really not looking good in my opinion we've made a double top we're starting to head back down so we're going to remove this in the higher time frames we have once again solidified a slightly uh slightly higher but nonetheless still a lower high let's move over so if we talk about this chart in terms of the oscillators that we've got going on uh, as you can see the squeeze one on the four hourly time frame has started to push back down to the downside the last time this happened we did have a fairly decent size capitulation bear in mind we did manage to make higher um, higher highs with this one in the lower time frames of course you know, we came back down another 7.6%, and this has just started kicking in since we were at the top of this candle. So if we do move down 
about another 7.6%. This is going to pull us down to the 19,800 range, which you may recognize as Bitcoin's previous all-time high. So if we do fall below that range, I do believe a lot of panic will ensue and the markets will start to capitulate. Looking at the MACD, I'm using the CM Alt MACD for this one, uh, one of my favorite variants, but as you can see, the MACD is currently very overbought on the four-hour time frame. And when you do zoom out, you can see you've got a high up here, you've got a lower high, and now you've solidified another lower high in the MACD. Every time you do poke above this overbought region, you have a big, big flush to the downside. I mean, if I zoom out, you can see from here, 31,500, we moved all the way down until we had a poke back up to 31,600, another flush back down to the downside. And now when we are topping out in this, um, in this bullet on in this bullish flip that we did have of the MACD which is now flipping bearish just like it did over here and just like it did over here you can very much see uh it's it's not really a good sign once the MACD tops out overbought and then starts colliding to the downside you know I'm not I'm definitely not saying that we're going to move down what was this move this move was 14,000. I'm not saying that we're going to have any type of move uh, as big as that. In fact, I would really be uh, really be assuming that we'd probably be coming down, maybe having one last bounce at the lows before coming down to between 16,500 and maybe 16 if we do get that bearish. That is kind of where uh, I at least perceive that the bottom would be. And now, quickly drawing our Fibonacci's before we do move over on this chart, you can still see in the very, very lower time frames we are hanging in there, but you know there is no volume confirming any of the breakouts that we were having. And when we do look at the inverse head and shoulders, when you do have this breakout, when you do have the back test and you start rolling down, this is the time where you want to see volume coming in to confirm the breakout. You want to see a strong back test and a push back up to new highs. And this just looks like, you know, bulls maybe got a tiny bit exuberant in the lower time frames. You basically had that double top. The double top is also seen over in the total crypto market cap. And it looks like this could have also been another potential inverse head and shoulders that could have been playing out. And we're starting to lose momentum. So if we do start to capitulate on the total crypto market cap, really not too much, about another 16 billion to the downside. This would only represent about another 1.5% drop. If you do have that drop, you're going to start invalidating these bullish structures that we have, like the inverse head and shoulders on Bitcoin and the inverse head and shoulders on the total crypto market cap. Both of these, though, you can see lower time frames for Bitcoin. You have solidified a double top formation over on the slightly mid to higher time frames on the total crypto market cap, you have also solidified this double top formation. Total crypto market cap as well, looking at the momentum indicators, basically the same as Bitcoin. You have the MACD flipping bearish after being overbought, and you've got the squeeze mom flipping back to the downside after the bulls have had a very, very flat and weak trend to the upside. And we're seeing the same with the squeeze mom. The squeeze mom was slightly more exuberant because a lot of the altcoins went on half decent rallies, but now because of that, we're probably going to see a hefty leg to the downside. Squeeze, uh, squeeze mom heading down. The MACD was overbought as well, and now this is heading down. You can also see when we do zoom out, you've got, yeah, this is really not good. I mean, you've got a high up here. You've got a lower high on the MACD, another lower high, another lower high, and another lower high. But when these are coming to the downside, they're still pretty hefty. And in fact, you know, depending on where you draw them from, you can also say that we are slightly decreasing but drawing from these you can you can also see that we are increasing so i would definitely say momentum on the total crypto market cap and bitcoin is very very bearish right now if we look at the obv which is the on balance volume as well you can just kind of see i mean on some of the charts we have made slight higher highs or we've tried to come up and double top the OBV is completely different though. I mean, we, we just keep on pushing down and down and down and it looks like we're probably now going to come out and take out the lows uh, and probably have something like this where we come down to lower levels. That's what I see playing out on the on balance volume. We talked about the MACD on the total crypto market cap it is heading to the downside. Squeeze one as well. Very indicative that you have made that lower high and you're now pushing back to the downside. Just like when we were here, at the bottom and we had a huge bearish move down on the 14th of June. We came back, reset momentum, had another bearish move on the 19th. This was a lower high. Because of that lower high, what did the total crypto market cap do? When we solidified this lower high, 
if I can pull it back up, we basically, this was right here, right at the bottom. And because of that, we had a massive move to the upside because we were making that uh, lower high, or at least, you know, to the upside. I mean, technically this would be a higher low, but this is in terms of the bearish momentum. Back when we come up to the upside, I imagine this is going to have the same effect. Now the squeeze bomb is running out of momentum, I feel like the next capitulation is going to be very, very hefty. And that's basically what I'm thinking for the uh, for the MACD as well. Just like I said, you know, we're basically just forming lower high after lower high after lower high after lower high. And I really do think we're getting ready for that next major move to the downside. If Bitcoin was going to break even short term bullish, it would need to poke its head back above 21,700. It would, it would need to get above 21,900. If it does not do that, then, you know, once again, nothing has changed. And it does seem like a lot of these indicators, especially this half diamond uh, potential, half diamond reversal pattern, as I always say on my channel, a failed move equals a fast move in the opposite direction. What does that mean? Well, we just have to look at the chart and we can tell very easily what this means. You had a failed move in a one hourly candle. You came back for the back test. This is where you would have wanted to start to head back up if this was not a failed move. What did we do instead? We back tested it and now we are very, very quickly heading back down to the downside. So once we retested this, 21,480, we're currently residing about 21,200 right now. We've come down to 21,100. And I think it's probably about the time that we start pushing back down to the downside. So we talked about the MACD heading to the downside. We've talked about the squeeze bomb heading to the downside. The bull market support bands are miles above your head. We also, also had a flip of the 13 EMA. Coming back to this 13 EMA, if we lose 20,700 to 28 uh, to 20,800, we are going to absolutely landslide. Why is this? Well, look back at previous trends. What happens when you have a temporary fake out above the 13 EMA and a couple days later you come back for the back test? You break down, retest it, break down, retest it, break down failed move above the 13 EMA, massive move back down to the downside. We did the same here. We emmed out into the 13 EMA. What did we do? Massive move to the downside. What are we doing right now? In the lower time frames, we've poked our head above it. We've come back for the back test. We've come up, basically made a double top structure and we're kind of emming down below this right now. So once again, this is gonna curve out to around about 20,800, 20,700. It depends how long it takes. You know, if we come back here in the next four hours, then 20,800. If we take another day or so, it might be more around the regions of 20,600. So the only other thing that I want to talk about is the RSI and we'll also pull up the bull market support band. So while we're here, let's clear up this chart a bit. Oh, not the bull market support bands, rather. We're going to be talking about the EMA ribbons. On the four hourly time frame, we are once again coming into the EMA ribbons. And if we do break below the four hourly EMAs, you've also got right here 20,800. This is where the 13 EMA is going to be. So if you do capitulate below here and then take out the uh, 13 day EMA at 2,000, uh, or sorry, 20,700. Like, like you can see here, we would be failing the inverse head and shoulders. We'd be having a failed move equals a fast move in the opposite direction. We also see this playing out as a failed move equals a fast move in the opposite direction. Uh, we would be breaking down from our micro uptrend over on this chart here. More or less, we've just been trending sideways. Like a lot of people have been getting out of bed for this. We've more or less just been trending sideways and forming, you know, high lower high and it looks like now is the time uh to end the crab market and to enter another bearish capitulation to the downside so four hourly ema ribbons were beneath them uh daily ema ribbons you're miles away from them you know these are up here at 20 uh 23,200. the rsi in the daily time frame has once again looks like it made a, another lower high it looks like it's having a rounding top and wants to move back down for one last move to the upside four hourly as well you know this this is kind of like an elongated rounding top uh this is probably more best defined as if we move this up a tiny bit this more so looks like a, a bart simpson pattern to me where you've got if we flatten this you've got straight run to the upside you've got a bunch of spiky tops up here where you just can't really seem to start pushing back above this previous level and because of this you've got a massive pole basically running up you've got bart simpson spiky hair and this is normally when this starts to massively capitulate back down to the downside i know it seems kind of like a meme to even mention like a bart simpson pattern but 
I promise you, look at the Bitcoin charts and look at how many times we have these Bart Simpson patterns. We had one here, spiky top, massive move back down to the start of the trend. Massive run up, spiky top, move back down. Massive run up, spiky top, move back down. These happen time over time over time again. Now, you know, I won't go through the entire charts. Uh, you know, I, I'm more than welcome you to go through the charts yourself and look at how often these Bart Simpson patterns play out uh, on the BTC charts. So the only other thing we have to talk about, we talked about the EMA ribbons, we talked about the money flow, the bull market support bands, they, they are miles above our head. The MACD, we've talked about this is flipping bearish on the total crypto market cap. The moving averages, the 13 day EMA coming in at 20,800 if we come down to it. And we also, no, we also talked about the squeeze mob. So that is all we've got today. That is a in-depth update over on the BTC and total crypto market cap momentum indicators. Just to summarize, no matter what you're looking at, if you're looking at the squeeze mom, if you're looking at the MACD, if you're looking at the on-balance volume, if you're looking at the RSI, the money flow indicator, if you're looking at just basic chart structure, all of these indicators that we've got going on right now to talk about the momentum in the markets is starting to fail us. And that is without mentioning the fact that volume has been fairly, fairly flat for this bottoming structure. I mean, depending on where you're looking at it on, there was some people stepping in to buy the dip over on Binance. But when you have these bottoming structures, when you have these, you know, potentially bullish patterns that you'd want to see breaking up to the upside, this is when you want to see green volume stepping in, green volume stepping in day over day over day, getting exponentially larger. Obviously, you can take a dip every now and then, but you want to see a market structure like this. What we're seeing we saw a one day spike in volume followed up with bearish volume and ever since then you can see even this massive run up was a lower high this was a lower high this was a lower high and the market structure is moving back down to the downside there is no volume to support this breakout and subsequently no matter what chart you're looking at no matter what moving averages you're looking at no matter what momentum indicators you are looking at it is all pointing towards the fact that this sideways crab market is ending and we're getting ready for that next leg to the downside i'll talk more about my macro uh, bear market predictions and where and why specifically i think we'll be going down to the ranges between 16,500 and 14,000. but i will upload that after this video so that being said, that is all I've got for you today. Uh, I also have noticed if we do look at the money flow indicator, you can see left shoulder, head, right shoulder. It looks like we are going to break down to the downside of this. This bullish divergence or hidden bullish divergence rather will be starting to fail very, very soon in my opinion. That's all I've got for you today. As always, Cowboy out. Peace.